So mastering it, what we mean by that, is learning to do it so damn good that we're only putting 20 to 30 percent of quality, effective and efficient time to it so that we can break out the remaining 70 percent of time and resources to engage our people. And the question that was asked last, I think, to Ernest about the people is that in terms of engaging them, um, given the, the Indian Act, it's, it's almost an extraordinary um, organizing feat to get the community ready to deal with the inherent right and to engage their people. The biggest challenge we face everywhere we go is how to engage the people because we've forgotten them for now going on eight generations under the Indian Act because there's not one word in the Indian Act anywhere in the Indian Act that says the band council needs to be accountable to its people. So consequently it has been. It hasn't been. So we've got this big issue on it. Where when you take a look at the Indian Act and you give it a good shake and you separate out those policy areas that fall outside of the Indian Act and into the realm of our inherent right, the idea of the transition is to take those things and begin to transition to your own government. I don't think it's going to be as hard as we think. And I'll finish with this last point. Everywhere I've been, uh, our people's reaction to this is, uh, oh my God, that's going to be too hard. And it's too hard to do. And I, my answer to that is there's nothing that can match that too hard that we've had to live with up to now under the Indian Act. There's nothing more that we can do to ourselves to damage ourselves any further. And we need to change the way we look at this. We need to look at this as having a good problem to solve. And that we created this good problem for ourselves because we want to get there. So we need to change our attitude about the way we look at it and the work that's before us. But one thing I understand about being an Indian Act uh, chief is that, you know, changes have to be made when status quo is not serving us. And reaction to crisis is the mode of addressing community issues. I know everybody in First Nations understand that. And I found out this firsthand. But realized there has to be a better way. Think of it as a big, you could think of the Indian Act and our participation in that system as what we might want to map, right? The Indian Act itself is a system. And what this does is it helps us differentiate some of the, the stocks, the variables, and the flows within the system. And it helps us understand nonlinear relationships. That's really key because linear relationships are kind of easy to understand, right? Do this, turn this on, turn this off, and there's an immediate adjacent possible, we call it adjacent possible response to that. But what if you're doing something, it's a little bit of chaos theory, right? What if you're doing something over here, but this happens way over here? That's where the steps in between, you can see them in a map. And that's, I think, what the Indian Act has done, right? While there's nothing in there that says, you shall not speak your language, we can map out exactly how it is we don't speak our languages. We know for sure Indian residential schools was a part of that. But for now, we wanted to focus on the structure. And one of the things Satsan had asked for was, I want to see the beast. I want to see the Indian Act. And so this is our first attempt. And not all the connections are made. And what you see before you are systems maps of the subsections of the Indian Act. Some are connected, some are not. And what you've got below there is actually a kind of a blow up of the box that is just above it. And this is just to give you a sense of what, what this thing looks like. 
Uh, that is just one subsystem. Of course, I should have looked at it before, but that's the powers of chief and council. The greened out areas are actually uh, parts of the uh, of the legislation that have uh, been rescinded. Um, but we tried to just say, okay, powers of chief and council, and what are the subsections, just so people can start to see it. This was, like I say, an early iteration. And then what we were doing as well is actually uh, connecting, and that's what that little arrow is down to that little box, uh, the actual subsystem of the Indian, or the, the actual text of the Indian Act, so people could have a look at it, click on it, and see what it says. But Francis Bell did some uh, work on, the, on a systems analysis of the Indian Act some years ago, and this was really helpful. Um, but this, this is just the, the beginning of, of this process. And so this is the structure. We wanted to give you, you know, an early, early draft. Um, there is, uh, we're not looking for feedback yet. Uh, lots of caveats around this. But this is our first attempt um, and uh, of the structure itself. You look within the system that's there to find the leverage points to make transformative change within the system. And I came forward there saying that assumption doesn't hold up for us because we know why the Indian Act system, we know what it was designed to do. And there's no way that we can tinker with or modify that system to make it work for us because it wasn't designed to do that. So the assumption I hold is that we can't tinker and modify with the Indian Act system to try to do something in it so that we can be more healthy and wise. We have to be able to see the system, to understand the systemic effect, like Mulaney mentioned language. Why do we all suffer from loss of language, including myself? Nothing in the Indian Act says it. But it did it. When you talk to our people, you get them to the point of talking about their vision for the future and their priorities. They say the first priority is the people. And what they're talking about there is we need to regain our identity as a people to strengthen ourselves, our personal resolve to be able to do this. The second thing that they identify as language. We've lost our language and the language is critical to regain our knowledge of our own governance systems, for example, our own laws, our principles and values and so on. The third thing that our people talk about is the health and well-being of our people. We're damaged and we're hurting in a lot of different ways. The fourth thing that they talk about is education. Not in the Western sense, but in our own context. Teaching our young people their history. Teaching them about their lands and their responsibilities. Teaching them about who they are as a people. Teaching them about their culture and their traditions and their ceremonies. That's what they're talking about. And the fourth thing they talk about always is the land. So what we want to be able to show them through this systems mapping is how the Indian Act caused this devastation to these things that we hold dear to ourselves, And realize that we can't fix it within that system. So we have to move out of the system.